that's a whole lot of bee food right there. In this video we're going to go through four different hives and just see how the sunflowers that were planted have affected the hives and just how the how the populations look. So sunflowers are extremely beneficial in the, in the sense that they are highly nutritious uh, in their, their pollen and their nectar. Sunflower pollen also counteracts the nosema spore infection in honeybees. There have also been studies where it is now scientifically proven to combat varroa mites in beehives. We've got a free honeybee removals and relocations training guide that, that's available now. It's, I've left the link in the description below to where you can get it. Let's get into the video. The farmers plant sunflower with pearl millet in between just to create some like a green manure that they can plow back into the soil for, for nutrients. It's actually for the cane. We have bees in those trees. There's an apiary there and then they're all along those trees is macadamia orchard and lots of hives in there. So all this feed would be highly beneficial for them. Thank you Ashton Musgrave for being one of the farmers that actually plants some forage for the bees. So let's go have a look at the hives that are in those trees over there, right here by the sunflowers, and just see what influence all of this food has on those hives. You can see that's where the sunflowers are, and these hives are in this gum plantation here. You can see how busy these colonies are. Very exciting to see when they this busy. They are defensive. The moment I walked in here, one stung me in the face. But that's great, that means they are healthy and have a lot of food. So let's open up and have a look and see what they look like inside. So start off just by having, having a look on the inside of the lid. It's always good to see, sometimes the queen goes up when you smoke. Also you can have a look and just see you know, what pollen is on the legs of the bees. And you can see for mites, it's a good, good way to check your bees for mites. When they're on the lid like this, you can do it like a general scan. I don't see any mites. This colony is very defensive now because they have a lot of nectar at their disposal. So about two weeks ago, these supers were completely empty. It looks like, okay, so they have started stockpiling some nectar, but very little. Oh, they're all over my phone now. And they're covering the lens as well. Let me just smoke the camera. You guys probably won't see anything now because of these bees all over the lens. Get off the lens, man. I'm sticking my phone. It's got like a rubber cover, so they are all over the phone now. Let's move to another hive. Well, this colony is definitely ready for a super. With the sunflowers right here. I think it's a good time to get, get it on. Lots of brood, lots of workers. No queen on the lid. Yes, there she is. Uh, I don't know if you can see her there. There she is. So you've got to be really careful when closing your lid and not squashing her between the walls of the, the hive, like here. There she is. Healthy looking queen, you know, so let's get it in. So either if you have a queen clip, but that can also injure. So the best is just to bump her in gently. So tap the side of the lid on so that she goes down and in. Yeah, she's in. Let's just see what the brood looks like in this hive. Okay, so yeah, there's your, got some cap brood, some open larvae and some younger larvae and then some eggs over here and some capped honey on the top okay so that's good i just want to see what the if there's pollen if they've been stockpiling a lot of pollen more than nectar that it just helps us also decide when is a good time to super most of the hives strong pollens are supered you can see all that pollen in there that's from the sunflowers nice yellow pollen yellows and oranges some frames here that we need to actually change out before they become honey bound like this 
There's a plenty neck in the environment, so we can pull this frame out. We'll replace it with an empty. These are defensive now. There's another one that we can that we can pull. And we will super them just to give them some more space as well. So let's get the brood back in. I don't want the brood to get cold, keep it as warm as possible. There's some more brood and a little bit of brood, but a drone brood. Normally cut that out, but that's such a little piece there. The drone brood, brood, and pollen, and capped honey on top. There's more brood and pollen. Mix of brood and pollen. Really nice colors there. Oh, there's a lot of drone brood mixed with worker brood. There's your worker brood, drone brood, worker brood, drone brood, capped honey. Okay, so lots of pollen. So you can see the sunflowers on this one hive. We've had, I think, five frames now of pollen. Lots of pollen stockpiling. Not much nectar. This nectar is from. Uh, uh, previous flows December November so it's at the moment it's predominantly pollen coming into the hives but that's good I mean it feeds all these babies very good okay so we're pulling those just those two frames you want to try get your honey on the outside honey frames on the outside pollen and then your brood on the center so that is brood again these are all broods. It's warm enough now so we can put these frames towards the center but on the sides of the main brood frames so that the, uh, the workers will build comb and the queen will lay. Uh, they won't stockpile with honey. If you put clean frames on the outside, they, they build comb and immediately stockpile with nectar. But if you put them on the center, the queen immediately lays as soon as there's comb built. There's another young colony brought in here just to couple of months ago and you can see how they've built all this virgin comb and just filled it up with brood because of all the food availability so that's another testament to having all the sunflowers here right next door so that is excellent for brood production another frame with a mix of brood and pollen Some beautiful colors there Oh, that color, nice sunflower, lovely. There's the queen, just moving over the brood. She's always trying to hide. She knows she's vital to the colony, so she's always on a mission to hide away from us. But look at all that beautiful pollen from the sunflowers. Here's another patch of sunflower the farmer's planted for some bee forage right here next to his max. So these bees, these hives in this orchard will be doing very well, be very strong soon. So guys, if you're in the pollination business, chat to the farmers of the farms and the, and the properties where you, where you have, have hives. Encourage them to, to, to plant some, some additional bee forage. Sunflowers is excellent. Pearl millet is excellent. There's also some planted here. There's a few other things. If you need some any, any information, send me a message and we can chat about it. Pollen coming in from the sunflowers. So it's about 32 degrees Celsius today. It's really hot. I'm wearing the Bihar ventilated bee suit. I'll leave a link in the description uh, below to where you can get it. It's a really good suit. I've been using it daily now for a while and uh, it works very well. You can see having sunflowers close to your, your hives is extremely beneficial. There's a lot of pollen in the boxes, a lot of brood and large populations in the hives. So we're extremely grateful to the farmer for planting this. So if you have hives on farms or you do hive management for, for farmers, encourage them to plant things like sunflower and 
pearl millet and other other things i'll leave a link in the description below of a list of bee forage flowering plants that, that we like to plant remember to like and subscribe and ring that notification bell so you don't miss any of our future videos and we'll see you in the next video cheers mm -hmm.